Now, you're looking at frail elderly patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. What specifically are the issues that you are raising with these, these patients who have an aggressive lymphoma? Yeah, well, uh, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is indeed aggressive, but it's also curable with a standard a regimen that is very much standard, that's our chop combination of rituximab, cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, vancristin, and prednisone. So the, the rate of, uh, of cure is quite high, but the problem is that this regimen, this regimen has some toxicity that may be not affordable for frail patients. And this regimen can kill in this, this patient from toxic death or induce so, so many toxicities that the patient don't remain uh, independent, for example. So what did you do in the study that you're now reporting? Well, the, the problem is uh, in, in this uh, patient, our job is not feasible. So we're searching for a regimen that may be the, the, the right choice in terms of uh, uh, efficacy toxicity ratio. Uh, and we uh, hesitating, I would say, with two strategies. One may be a, a very cautious strategy with uh, uh, omitting the doxorubicin. Or another strategy is to use a reduced dose of less toxic doxorubicin, in this case at lipo liposomal doxorubicin. So we proposed a randomized phase two between RCOF, very cautious, and RCOP with uh, 40 milligram per meter square of liposomal uh, doxorubicin, uh, which is le more aggressive but more risky, I would say. And how did you? F define your frailty in these elderly patients? That, that's a very important question that is not easy to answer indeed. I think that uh, if you are looking in the literature about the, the different ways of selecting the frail patients, you, you find a, a lot of different approaches. Uh, it may be, a uh, patient may be selected on a geriatric grounds uh, with a geriatric questionnaire, for example, or they may be selected on uh, oncological or hematological grounds, that is, uh, to select the feasibility of a treatment. This is what we, we have chosen. So we have uh, selected patients not able to receive our job according to a series of factors and to the opinion of the hematologist. This includes performance status. So uh, they had to have at least one of these factors to, to, to come in the, to be accrued in this trial. The performance status three, uh, low creatinine clearance between, uh, below uh, 50 millilitres per, uh, per minute. Uh, low left ventricular ejection fraction below 50 percent, uh, high bilirubin, high serum bilirubin, or severe comorbidities that did preclude the use of our job. So this is how we selected. And uh, at the end, uh, I would say that about 50 percent of the patients are at a performance status three and 50% are at low creatinine clearance, and the other factors were much lower, indeed. And this select a population that is both of adverse prognosis in terms of lymphoma, and also with adverse features in terms of geriatric assessment. Mm. Uh, how many patients did you look at, and what did you find? Well, we had 67 patients accrued. Uh, we had 47 in the RCOP arm, that's the, the cautious regimen, and 20 in the RCOP arm, because we had to stop the RCOP arm, though the most risky one, because of toxicity. We've defined a severe toxicity as either toxic deaths, that is evident, but also a fibrine leutropenia. With the knowledge that uh, we approach in previous studies, that fibrinal neutropenia is very much life-threatening in this patient because half of them died in the previous studies most of the time. But indeed, with the help of geriatric management that was added in this trial, so the geriatricians were allowed to help the, the, the medical oncologists or hematologists do their job, well, indeed, fibrinal neutropenia didn't kill patients, I would say. So uh, we had to stop it because of fibrinal neutropenia, not because of of toxic deaths. But at the end, the observation is that indeed, although the arm is more risky, it appears that uh, more patients do go to the end of treatment with response. And toxicity is uh, really higher, but it's very much manageable. So at the end, probably, uh, this is a randomized phase two, it's not randomized phase three, though the conclusion should be very much cautious. But I would say that our copy is probably more uh, 
appropriate for these patients and uh, probably to be proposed, but still remains risky. So you have to manage patients with the help of the geriatrician. For the RCOP, probably it's not the right choice right now, and but uh, this is uh, a more cautious. So we have to think to other approaches, and probably a, a possible solution, but it's place for research, clinical research, is to add to RCOP some targeted therapies. That's the, the place that we can use. What should doctors be making of these cautious interpretations at this stage? Well, I think that as much as possible, it depends on clinical judgment, but as much as possible, you should prescribe some uh, anticycline containing regimen, some R-CHOP, R-CHOP derived regimen. You may use uh, less toxic anticycline like liposomal dox, for example. Uh, you, you may discuss about uh, omitting some drugs uh, with, for example, vincristine if the patient has a risk of falls. But uh, I think that anticycline up to now should be part of the regimen. That's first conclusion. Then I think that uh, depending on factors that remain to be identified, you have to select for some patients that should not be treated curatively, but select patients that should be treated palliatively with, well, it may be best supportive care, but it may be a very much reduced regimen, which in, in some cases may be also efficient. So our COP may be efficient in some patients, but it should be restricted to really the, the, the patients with poor status, probably. And the brief bottom line message then for doctors, what should they take home very briefly? Well, uh, I became well thinking that intracycling was something very much dangerous in this patient. It appears that intracycling is not that dangerous if you perform correctly, so that our chop or our chop reduced regimens should remain the standard for the management of the elderly with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, even frail patients. You're welcome.